Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our academic overview session for the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. It's three o'clock, so we're going to get started. We really appreciate you joining us today. Um, before we start with introductions and the rest of our PowerPoint, we would love to know a little bit about what excites you the most about coming to UVM this fall. So on the next slide, in just a moment, you'll find a QR code. You can use your phone to scan the code and you can answer this question online. We'll be able to see what your classmates and the other Cal students on this call think about what excites them most um, for coming to UVM in the fall. So yeah, please take a minute to answer this question and then we'll get started. Okay, I see some people are already excited to meet new friends, to meet people on campus. Uh, yep, we've definitely heard from a lot of students that they're excited for outdoor opportunities. That's awesome. I'm sure a lot of you are still in high school and haven't yet graduated, so I'm glad that you're excited to start at college this fall. Unique experiences. Yep, I definitely think you'll find that UVM has a lot of unique experiences. The size of the school I think is perfect. It's large enough to really have a lot of things to do, but small enough to feel really connected. I see some students are, are excited about some food. So you must have heard about the Burlington food scene and are excited to try some downtown restaurants. Someone's excited for the cow farm, so there must be an animal science student or two on the call. Definitely understand that that's exciting to have some cows uh, really close to campus. And at the end of the presentation, we'll talk a little bit more about our cows. Skiing, yep, definitely some students who come to UVM for the skiing, so I can see how that would be exciting. I see someone else mentioned fall, definitely a big draw to the state. So. Yeah, I can definitely see the connection of why you are drawn to UVM, and I'm really excited um, for you as well to enjoy the school and enjoy our state. So we really appreciate you taking the time to share a little bit about what you're excited about. So just to introduce um, myself, my name is Whitney Northrup, and I'm the Associate Director of Student Services for the college. I did both my undergraduate and my graduate degree at the University of Vermont, and I've worked for this college for over a decade at this point. So I know firsthand that this is a really special college to be a part of, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit more today about CALS. I'm joined by a couple members of our student services team, and they'll be introducing themselves soon. So as I said, we're really excited to have you here for the next hour or so to tell you a little bit more about CALS and what to expect this summer in terms of the academic side of things as you prepare to start at UVM this August. So we're going to cover a few things that we feel are important for you to know. Today you'll learn a little bit more about CALS. You'll learn um, some tips for a successful transition to UVM. We'll talk a little bit about the application of your AP and transfer credit. We'll go over how to prepare for your course registration appointment sometime this summer, and then we'll be sure to save plenty of time uh, for questions at the end of this presentation. A few general housekeeping things for um, the presentation today. Please keep your microphones muted unless you would like to talk at the end of the presentation to ask a question. You're welcome to keep your cameras on or off. And if you have a question during any of the slides of this presentation today, you can open the chat, which is on the right hand side of the Teams meeting, and you can type your question in. And as I mentioned, I have a couple of members from our team on the call today, and they'll be able to answer your question in real time. So now I'd like to introduce you to those members of the Cal student, stu sorry, student services team. So if Jen and Kaylee could please turn your cameras on, we'd love to hear a little bit more about your role within the college. Hi everybody, my name is Kaylee Booten. I am the Cal Student Services Specialist here at UVM. Um, my job entails quite a few things, but some things that will be beneficial for you guys is I've been working really hard on block scheduling all of you guys into your core classes for your major. We've been doing that the last few weeks. Um, I help with major minor change forms. I run our, our student services email. So if you ever send an email to us, I'll probably be the one responding to you or I'll delegate it to someone for um, 
a response to you. Um, I help with catalog editing and lots of other little things um, throughout the school year as well. So if you ever come into the office, I am probably the first person you'll see. So we're very excited to have you guys here and we're excited to meet you in the fall. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Reardon Brown. I am part of the student success team in CALS. So we will be getting to know each other a bit over the summer as we work through any questions that you might have about your schedule. Um, my role at the college is to really aid in your transition during this first year, to answer questions that you might have about program curriculum, to highlight events that are happening on campus, to offer some programming for you, and also to facilitate connections with other student services offices across campus as needed. So we're really glad to see you all here today and look forward to getting to know you all so much more. Thank you both. And just to introduce you to a couple other familiar faces, um, we have a few other members of the team that were able to join us today. And that's Kate Finley Woodruff, who are, is our Associate Dean, and Gabby Trudeau, who is our second Student Success Advisor. And then we have Kate Fitzsimmons, who is our Recruitment and Retention Specialist. So if you would like to visit us at any point during your time at UVM, our entire team works out of Morrill Hall. So the Cal Student Services team is located in Morrill Hall, Room 106. Uh, this building is located right behind the Davis Student Center that I think you'll spend a lot of time at, as well as the library, which we hope you'll spend a lot of time at. And we're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 p.m. We welcome walk-ins at any time during the week, but if you would like, you can also make an appointment with our office. Kaylee's going to put our email in the chat so that you have the best way to reach us. And um, feel free to email us anytime with any questions that you have, especially if anything comes up after this presentation or throughout this summer. So to tell you a little bit more about our Cal Student Services team and what we can help you with. Um, so first of all, we're really excited to assist you as you explore all things that college has to offer. We're dedicated to helping you achieve your goals, even if you're unsure of them yet. So whether you have questions about curriculum, policies, or opportunities within CALS or Greater UVM, we're going to be your go-to resource for all things UVM related um, to ensure that you have the information that you need to be successful. So as a UVM student, you'll learn that it's important to understand and follow our university's academic policies and practices. And we know that can be overwhelming, but we just want to reassure you that we're here to help. So we have all the information that you need, whether you're wondering about a class attendance policy, transferring credits, tracking your progress towards graduation. We assure you that we have the answers we're looking for and we can get you connected to the right office if we need to make a referral. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about our college and UVM. So specifically our academic programs within the college, the advising model that we utilize, and we'll talk a little bit about some policy, some common policies and resources that we think you should know. Alrighty, so as you can see, our college has quite a few majors and on the next slide, we'll look at our minors as well. We have 14 majors and 20 minors here at in CALS. Um, our students consider a planetary health approach, understanding that the people, the health of people, communities, animals, plants, and ecosystems are all linked. Your studies in CALS will span a diverse spectrum and can encompass veterinary, animal, and plant sciences, as well as biological, microbiological, molecular, and biochemical sciences. You might also explore sustainable agriculture, food systems, and nutrition alongside the social sciences of agroecology, economics, and community development. Public communication skills are honed, empowering our students to build a more just society and to create impacts that will lead to a better future for all. As you can see, we do have quite a few majors. Um, and if you are thinking of switching to maybe a different major in our college um, or want to change anything, we are currently working. As I said, we're blocking you into your core classes right now, and we're hoping to have those all blocked before you guys start June um, orientation or registration appointments, which will be starting next week. So if you do feel you see some of these and you want to change your major into a different major, I'm going to put in 
our student change of major form um, that can be filled out in the My UVM student portal or by emailing calstudentservices at uvm.edu. And that will just help to ensure before you go into your appointment that you have the proper blocks built into your schedule. Thanks, Kaylee. And um, a question that we get a lot is, can I change my major at any point during my time here at UVM? Um, so if you're a new student or a transfer student and you're thinking of changing your major, it definitely benefits you to do so if you feel set in that decision this summer, just so that you can have your fall schedule um, pinned down and accurate for your new major. Um, that being said, you can certainly change your major at any point during your time at UVM. Um, the change of major is, of course, going to have less of an impact if you do so in your first first or even second year. Um, it becomes a little more complex to change a major, especially if it's drastic when you get into the junior or senior year. Um, it's not to say it's not possible. It just takes some careful planning and, and it's definitely a discussion you would want to have with your advisor as soon as you feel ready to do so. Um, so as Kaylee was saying, we have um, 14 minors, but also or 14 majors and 20 minors. Um, so this is a list of all of the minors within our specific college. The newest minor that we have is the equine studies um, minor, which uh, just launched. Uh, we do not require that you have a minor in order to earn a bachelor's degree from our college, um, but you certainly can have a minor. You can even have two. Very seldomly, we have a student that graduates with three. Um, a minor is, is typically five to six classes, 15 or 18 credits. So it's a nice way to explore your interests or to bolster your major um, by taking some classes that align with what you're interested in doing for a future career. Um, if you do wish to declare a minor, um, we generally recommend that you wait until the fall semester just so that you have time uh, to think about the minor, to plan ahead. You likely won't be taking any minor classes until the spring semester anyways. Um, so we would recommend holding off on declaring that minor until you get to campus in August. Um, and like, I don't believe I've mentioned this yet, but the minors do not have to be within CALS. So you could declare a minor um, in any of the other colleges on UVM campus. Um, so for instance, if you were interested in math or psychological science um, or even business, you could declare a minor within the other college. One thing I had meant to mention on the previous slide about majors is that we do have a self-designed major program in CALS. So that's something unique to our college. It does involve a proposal process where you would work with a committee of faculty to propose a major that you would like to um, develop. There are certain requirements like the timeline that you have to apply, the amount of credits that have to be taken, taken within our college, and of course it has to eventually be approved before you can officially declare self-design. Um, but if you're really passionate about mixing some of your interests and kind of creating your own uh, degree pathway, definitely check out more information that's listed in our catalog, which is published online. Um, we did just have a student graduate last month. Um, he did a self-designed major combining interests in um, Japanese dairy farming and animal science. So he spent uh, almost a year at the end of his time at UVM in Japan learning from dairy farmers about the specific um, Japanese dairy farming uh, techniques that they use for their dairy herds. Um, so he was able to combine a couple different interests with the hope of bringing some of those techniques back to um, his own farm. So um, it's definitely possible to do. And I just wanted to mention that as kind of a unique program for Kells. So um, now we'll talk a little bit about our advising model within the college. So everyone will meet with an advisor this summer, but the advisor you meet with this summer might not necessarily be the advisor that you're assigned to next year. Um, all of our advising assignments will be finalized in mid-August before you arrive to campus. So you'll receive a welcome letter from your advisor, um, which will include their contact, their information, you know, and a little bit more about them, like how they prefer to schedule appointments. Um, if you're not sure about how they prefer to schedule appointments, we recommend that you reach out to them directly. If you are a first time first year student on the call today, you will be ass assigned to either Jen Reardon Brown, who you met earlier, or Gabby Trudeau. Um, so there are student success advisors and they advise all first year students during your first year. After your first year, as you transition into sophomore year, you will be assigned to a faculty advisor within your major department, and you'll spend the rest of the three years at UVM assigned to that same advisor um, who is a faculty member within your department. 
if you're a new incoming transfer student on the call today, you will be assigned directly to a faculty member from your major department. So if you're an animal science major, that would mean you are assigned to an animal science faculty member and you'll remain with them throughout the rest of your time at UVM unless you were to change your major. Um, you can find your advisor's name in the My UVM student portal or in Navigate. We'll talk a little bit about Navigate later in the presentation. Um, but we definitely want to reassure you that Student Services has a close relationship with faculty advisors, and we all work in collaboration with the hopes of bringing you the best experience at UVM. So our Cal Student Services team hosts several workshops throughout the semester, and Jen is going to talk a little bit more about those workshops and what you can expect next fall. Thanks, Whitney. Yeah, we are interested in offering a series of workshops for students that are informational, that are success oriented, and that focus on building community during your first year. And so we're often taking a topic and doing a deep dive into that area. So two examples of that on this slide are the ASI hour and the pre-health panel. Um, both of those workshops were designed to give students a wider view of career options. Um, you know, a lot of students come in thinking pre-vet, but we also want students to um, be thinking and learning about a lot of other options. The same goes for pre-med. Um, we have uncovered an extensive list of career options in the pre-health field um, that were really interesting, and those are offered to all students. Um, we also are really invested in student health and well-being, so we organized a first year yoga series that was really fun. Um, we're partnering with other offices on campus to support your success. Um, so the note-taking workshop was done in collaboration with our tutoring center on campus. We're always interested in running sessions that students are very interested to attend. So if you have ideas, things you want to engage in in your first year, um, Gabby and I are both really open and welcoming and happy to hear um, your thoughts as well. Thanks, Jen. So now we're going to talk a little bit about your transition to UVM. So I think that joining some of these workshops and events is another way to get acquainted to UVM, to meet people in your major, to meet faculty in your major, and e even other staff across UVM who can help build a good support network for you. Um, so we understand it's a big transition coming to college for the first time or transferring to a new institution. And so there's a few things we want you to know um, that we think will help you make a successful transition. So first of all, it's totally normal to take some time to settle into yourself at college. So we hope we give, we hope that you give yourself the space to explore and time to adjust. That being said, we hope you remember that it's okay to ask for help and you don't need to do it all on your own. And hopefully we've shown you already during this presentation that we're here to support you every step of the way and you're always welcome to reach out and we'll always be there to, to support you. We hope that you don't forget to prioritize self-care as well as your mental health. So you know yourself best, but please also remain open to trying new resources on campus for support. Um, we hope you become familiar with all the amazing resources that are available to you so that you can use them when you feel it's the right time. High school and college are, are really uh, different. So if you're coming right from high school or even if you've just spent a year at college, um, you may still need to adjust your study habits when you get to campus. So when you're in high school, you spend the majority of the day in class. In college, you're actually gonna spend the majority of the day outside of class. So you're gonna be in charge of your schedule and your time management and your study habits. Um, so we definitely will um, want you to take advantage of services like the tutoring center um, beyond just subject area tutoring. They also offer time management and study skills tutoring. Um, everyone in their office is a trained peer tutor, and so um, that might be appealing to you just to learn some new tips for studying at the college level. Um, and lastly, we hope that you remember that college is meant to be a challenge, um, but we definitely believe in you that you'll be able to succeed in all you set out to accomplish. So a few more kind of like nuts and bolts things that we wanted to highlight here. Um, UVM does require that students have a laptop. Um, so that means if you typically use a tablet like a Chromebook or an iPad, those are not actually gonna meet the minimum software requirements that you'll be required to um, utilize in some of your classes. So 
you know, you might be tasked to use things like Microsoft Word and Excel. Um, so you'll want to make sure you have the appropriate laptop to do all of those things when you arrive in the fall. If for some reason you don't have access to a laptop, um, UVM does still have computer labs on campus and those are available for you to use. Um, Planning ahead is a, is a critical skill as a college student. So for example, the final exam schedule is already posted for next fall. You can find it on the website of the registrar or in the course syllabus you receive during the first week of classes. Um, but it's something you'll want to take, take into consideration as you plan leaving in December. Um, the final exam schedule is there, it's already posted. So we hope that you uh, take a look at the beginning of the semester. So speaking of planning ahead, we also recommend that you review all of your syllabi during the first week of classes. Um, the, syllabi, the syllabus for each course includes important dates and policies that are specific to that course. So we hope that you um, will take time to read each of the syllabus that you're provided to make note of the big due dates and to kind of get a lay of the land um, in terms of the semester. Um, let's see, we hope that you have a happy and healthy semester, but of course things come up. And so if you need to miss class, you'll want to check that syllabus that you've received to um, learn more about how each of your instructors handles absences. Um, if you need to take an extended absence, you're likely going to need to talk to us in Cal Student Services about navigating that absence. Um, but we're here to help counsel you through your options if that comes up. And hopefully you've all started to become familiar with your UVM email. Um, and so the UVM email, it's really important for you to access that regularly. So you'll want to get in the habit of checking it often. You can even add your UVM email to your phone so that it's easily accessible. Um, it is the way that UVM is going to officially communicate with you. So your instructors will send communications to your UVM email. You'll, you'll receive Brightspace notifications through email. So for instance, if you have a Brightspace quiz due, you're going to receive receive a little reminder telling you that quiz is due and you need to take it. Um, but also your advisor will email you um, and us in student services might reach out um, with information regarding events and other things that we think you should know. Um, so definitely get in a good habit of checking it daily because you will be um, wanting to not miss out on anything that comes in. So during um, orientation in August, you will have the opportunity to attend um, more presentations about UVM's vast array of resources. I just wanted to take some time to highlight some of the, the resources that, that come to mind when I think about what's available to you as a student. This is definitely not a comprehensive list, but these are kind of the big names that you'll wanna be aware of. Um, so such services include student health services, you can kind of think of that as like a primary care provider. So if you're feeling unwell and you need to be seen um, by a medical care provider, you can meet with a doctor or a nurse at Student Health Services. We also have an office uh, called Counseling and Psychiatry Services, which you'll hear referred to as CAPS pretty often. They offer psychiatry services as well as one-on-one -on -one counseling, group therapy, and they also make referrals um, to, to campus providers, or sorry, off-campus providers within the Burlington community. Um, student Accessibility Services is an office that supports students that have documented disabilities, chronic health, or mental health conditions. Um, so if you received any sort of accommodation in high school, we definitely recommend that you connect with a specialist in their office this summer. They'll be able to review your medical documentation and let you know what type of um, accommodations that you are eligible for. Um, definitely recommend you look into this, even if you feel like you don't necessarily need or want to utilize them in the fall semester. They are, um, they're something that cannot be used retroactively. So we always recommend that you proactively set them up in, in case the need arises. Um, Living Well is an awesome um, kind of like holistic student uh, wellness center on campus. So they're located in the Davis Center on the first floor. They do a lot of um, programming uh, and events, like they might do a, some sober activities on the weekends. They have a lot of like health coaching and health education presentations. They have a yoga studio. Um, they do, let's see, they have therapy dogs that come in during midterms. Um, so they're really focused on your holistic well being. Um, they do a lot of great events. I would definitely check them out once you get to the Davis Center. 
Um, I've mentioned the tutoring center, but that's something that is available to you as a UVM student. It's free. You get one hour of tutoring per class per week, in addition to things like study skills and time management tutoring. The Writing Center, another incredible resource on campus, they utilize graduate students. So you can find a graduate student who um, mentors within your discipline. They can help you if you're just starting out with a paper, if you need someone to edit it, if you're feeling stuck, like you can't even start. Um, I would check them out. They're located in the library, another awesome resource for you. Um, and then we have several identity centers um, for students on campus. So Mosaic Center for Students of Color. You can see the poster on the, the right hand side here at the bottom. The Mosaic Center sponsors a breakfast every Friday for students during the academic year. So if you're a part of the center, you can stop by for some community for some free food and an office on campus sponsors the breakfast each week. So you can meet some new um, faculty and staff as well. The Interfaith uh, Centers is also open and available to students, as well as the PRISM Center and the Women and Gender Equity Center. Um, so this slide also includes some uh, recent posters here of events that these centers have done on campus. Uh, I would also recommend that you check out UVM Board and maybe someone, Kaylee or Jen, could put that in the chat. But this is a, a resource that um, is basically a campus-wide calendar of all of the fun events that are happening on campus, whether it be something Living Well is sponsoring or it's a concert on campus. Um, you'll want to check that out for a daily list of everything uh, that's going on. So here's a quick overview of your first academic semester at UVM. Um, so the semester is going to fly by, and this is just a quick look at some major dates um, for the fall semester. You'll start classes on August 26th, and then for the next uh, two weeks, there's a, there's a time period called add drop. And so during this time, you can make small adjustments to your schedule if needed. Um, we definitely recommend that you speak with your advisor during this time if you're thinking about making any sort of adjustments to your schedule. Um, but if you needed to drop a class or add a class or, or replace a class, now's the time to do that. Um, just want to mention that you can freely add and drop through the first five days. But after the first five days, you do need instructor permission to add anything. Um, so like I said, just, just talk to your advisor about what's possible, um, but definitely keep those dates in mind. If you need to withdraw from a class for any reason, you have until October 28th to do so. If for some reason after that deadline you need to withdraw for medical reasons, that's something you can talk to us in student services about. But October 28th is the main withdrawal deadline for all students for any reason. Uh, before you head home for Thanksgiving break, you're going to meet with your advisor to talk about spring 2025 registration. So they'll help you pick out classes and then you'll register right before you head home for break. Um, you'll head back to campus after break until uh, December 6th, which is the last day of classes. And then you'll spend the following week um, finishing up your final projects, taking your final exams before you head home for winter break. Um, so the 14 or 15 week semester is definitely going to fly by. So like I said previously, make sure you're checking your syllabi and just getting a lay of the land so that you know what to expect this semester. Um, but it really does go by really fast. So we hope that you're able to make the most of it um, and get the support from us that you need during the semester. So we'll, we'll move on now and we'll talk a little bit about AP and transfer credit and how that credit is evaluated here at UVM. Um, if you took dual enrollment credit at during high school, if you're a transfer student who took uh, credit elsewhere and you have not already done so, you should send any transcripts that you have to transfer at uvm.edu and someone will put the contact information in the chat. Um, but that is the, the UVM Transfer Affairs Office is the office on campus that's gonna evaluate your transcript, evaluate your credit and apply it to your UVM record. So if you've already done that, if you've already transferred in your credit, those credits are likely already reflected on your UVM transcript, which is something that you can view in the My UVM student portal. Um, you'll want to consult with your advisor to fully understand how the transfer credits will fulfill your degree requirements. So some courses might transfer in as an exact match to a UVM course. Some courses might come in as not quite an exact match, 
but your advisor will be able to um, look at those courses and by exception, perhaps allow them to count for some of your requirements at UVM. Um, so definitely a conversation that transfer students will want to have this summer at your registration appointment. And first years, if you've taken dual enrollment credit, definitely something you'll want to bring up during your um, group appointment in June. If you have taken an AP exam this year, your scores are going to be available and sent to UVM sometime in July. So at that point, we'll review your AP scores. Um, we will contact you after receiving them if you need to make any potential adjustments to your schedule. So you might need to make adjustments if, for example, you received AP credit for a course that you then enrolled in in the fall. Um, we don't want you to duplicate the course, so we'll reach out to help you find a substitute. And then depending on your major, uh, AP credit might be accepted for um, some of your major requirements. And if that's the case, we'll also reach out just to let you know what we can accept and indicate whether or not you should make any schedule changes for fall. Um, if you are a life science major student and you have AP biology credit that is going to be transferred in, you might be invited to enroll in BCore 1425, which is an accelerated biology class. Um, if invited, you will receive a, uh, an email in July and we'll help you enroll in that course if that's something you would like to do. Um, BCore 1425 is a single course that covers two BCore requirements. So it's a four credit class that essentially meets eight credits worth of requirements. That being said, it is accelerated, it is advanced. Um, it's not something that you have to opt into, but if you excel at biology and, and you're interested in taking it, um, if you are invited in July, that's something we're happy to help you explore further. So we'll talk a little bit now about your course registration appointment. Um, so all of these appointments are gonna be held on Teams um, remotely like this meeting is over the summer. Um, first years will have a little bit of a different setup than transfer students, so I'll speak um, specifically about each. So hopefully you have downloaded um, the app Navigate. Um, if not, I would definitely do that as soon as you can. Um, we're going to use Navigate as our platform for scheduling all appointments this summer and any appointment that you want to make with an advisor throughout your time at UVM. Um, so it's good for you to have access to that now just to get familiar. Um, Navigate, besides um, featuring appointment scheduling, uh, it also features things like your class schedule, so you can have a weekly view. Um, you can view appointment notes. So if you meet with your advisor at the conclusion of that appointment, they're going to enter some notes about what you two talked about, and you'll have access to those notes. So if you need to refer back to um, you know, what, what you talked about, what classes they recommended, um, that's all going to be in Navigate. You can also... Um, find students in your classes that want to form um, like a study group. It's called Study Buddies and Navigate. But if you're in a course that you feel you could use um, some help studying with, there's a way to opt into Study Buddies. Um, and it has a lot of cool features. So I would definitely check it out this summer so you get familiar. Um, so yeah, so back to scheduling appointments. If you are a first year student, you'll meet with Jen or Gabby from June 10th to June 28th. Um, so sometime this month. You'll meet with um, one to two other students from your major. And during that appointment, you'll talk about your major, you'll review your fall schedule. And um, if your major allows it, you might be able to add a class um, or two. So as Kaylee mentioned, for first year students, we have been working on blocking you into the classes um, that are required of you as a first year student in your first semester. So you don't need to worry about whether or not you have a seat. Um, that will be all set for you. And then for transfer students, um, you'll be meeting with a major advisor from your department at some point during the summer. You might have already met with them. So we started advising in March of this year and we'll continue advising transfer students through August. Um, so you'll also receive an invitation to make an appointment from Navigate. Just like first years, it's gonna go straight to your UVM email. So you'll wanna check your email for the link to make that appointment. Um, and at this appointment, you'll meet just one-on-one, -on -one, um, so you'll be able to review your transfer credit, talk about what the transfer credit counts as at UVM. Um, they'll help you pick out classes and then answer any other questions that you have. 
And um, for all students on the call today, if you're having trouble scheduling an appointment or if you don't think you've received the email, definitely email us in Cal Student Services and we'll either be able to resend you the link or help troubleshoot whatever it is that you're struggling with. So as I just mentioned, um, we do block uh, first year students into courses. So Jen's going to talk just a little bit more about what the first year schedule entails. Yeah, so when you log into your registration appointment, um, we're going to take a look at your schedule and it has been specifically tailored to match your major's requirements. Um, those course choices have been selected by lead faculty in your programs. Um, and we are generally advising students to enroll in between 12 to 15 credits during your first semester at UVM. Um, 12 credits is the minimum amount needed to be considered a full-time student. 15 credits is about the average um, for students to graduate on a very clean pathway in four years. Um, and then 19 credits would be kind of the, the max enrollment that a student would um, enroll in each semester. And, you know, we frequently field questions from students who are concerned because maybe they're in 13 credits or 14 credits in their first semester. And we try to give all assurances that um, that is not going to impact you over time credit totals are going to fluctuate from semester to semester. Maybe you're coming in with some AP or transfer credits that are going to kind of already take care of that difference between um, the 15 credit average. So nothing to worry about. We will have these more detailed conversations during our registration advising appointments uh, as they come up for you individually. But this is just kind of a good guide starting point. Thanks, Jen. Um, and we we got the question last call about um, like how many credits is a course. Um, so if you're not familiar with the credit system, a typical course is about three credits. Um, if you're enrolled in a lab class, that's typically going to be four credits. You might take some some classes that are one to two credits. So, for example, if you want to get involved with a club sport, that's a credit. Um, we have some music classes if you um, sing or play an instrument. Um, but typically classes are going to be between three and four credits. So if you have 15 credits a semester, you're looking at anywhere from four to five classes. Oops, I skipped ahead. OK. <laughs> Thanks. So in order to prepare for your course registration appointment, um, if you have not made an appointment yet, please check your UVM email. Um, we've been getting a great flood of appointment inquiries after these orientation meetings. So I hope to see something similar after this call as well. Um, but you will see a schedule to a, a link to schedule directly in Navigate. Um, we recommend students can prepare for this meeting by reviewing our schedule of course website. This is a fantastic resource that lists course information, prerequisites, open seats, and things like that. Um, we also do not have a specific language requirement in CALS. Um, but some students may elect to continue a foreign language from um, high school or possibly pursue it as a minor. Um, and if that was the case for you and you were looking to take some elective credit, um, we do have a language placement exam. Um, we will post the link in the chat. And we also have a calculus readiness assessment. Um, that is really specific to um, just a couple majors, and I think off the top of my head, I can think of biological sciences um, for the first semester, um, but generally you will have um, received that information on your new student checklist if that's a requirement for you. So if you don't see that as a checklist item, calculus is not something that you need to worry about to prepare for your appointment. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, and just to underscore the importance of um, making your appointment as soon as possible for first years, those appointments start Monday. 
and then they go for three weeks. But we want to make sure that you're able to meet with an advisor at a time that works for you. So um, definitely log in after this appointment or after this team's meeting um, to make that appointment. Um, transfer students, you have a little bit more wiggle room, but of course it's beneficial to try to meet with an advisor sooner than later just to make sure that the classes that you need still have seats. Um, so we hope you're able to prioritize making the appointment if you haven't already done so. So we're just going to end the presentation before we um, save time for questions by letting you know that we're really excited to see you during orientation at our new student welcome, which will be at the Miller Farm. Um, that's going to be held on the afternoon of Friday, August 23rd for everyone that is participating in orientation. Um, so we're going to bus you down to the farm, which is less than a mile from campus, and you'll be with your fellow new Cal students to learn more about your program, um, clubs that we have within CALS and other ways to get involved. You'll meet the newest uh, cream calf. So in this picture are some of the cream cows in the barn. So every year we have a cream uh, calf that we let our incoming class name. Um, so if you wanna be a part of that really fun kind of contest, um, please follow our Instagram and we'll be posting information about that later this summer. Um, but while you're down at the farm, you'll have a chance to do some tours, um, engage in some activities with faculty. And then, of course, we'll send you home with a lot of um, fun freebies, including a Cal's t-shirt, a plant for your dorm room from the UVM greenhouse, all while you enjoy UVM ice cream, cabot cheese, and apples that are fresh from our farms. Um, so we are really excited to see you there. And um, now I'll kind of turn it over to you all that are here today. And if you have questions that we didn't answer, we definitely encourage you to raise your hand, turn on your camera um, and ask anything that we left out. That could be something about our college, something about UVM in general. Um, you know, now's your time to, to get those questions answered. Of course, we're available all summer, but I'm happy to chat with you now. Yeah, I see. Um, maybe if Jen or Gabby can call on the students, I can't totally see while I'm presenting. <laughs> um, we don't have names. We just have net IDs. Um, so there's F-L-E-V-E-N-S-O, if you want to go first. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, I was just wondering about uh, the process of changing your major, maybe outside of this college. Yeah, that's a good question. So if you're interested in changing your major to another major that's offered at UVM, not within CALS, you'll want to fill out the change of major college form, which Kaylee can link in the chat. Um, each school at UVM has a different process for accepting internal transfers or students that are already at UVM and want to change their major college. Um, so it depends on what program you're looking at. But once you fill out that form, it's going to go to that college and then they're going to reach out to you to tell you a little bit about your process, whether or not um, you're accepted right up front or whether or not they have prerequisites that you need to meet, for, for example. Um, but that form is the best way to initiate that change. Thank you so much. Yeah. Perfect. And then it looks like we have R R I O D A N. Um, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know that this might be like really specific to my major. I'm sorry, but um, do you know if the calculus placement exam is required for animal science? Yeah, so our life science majors require um, calculus for animal science. If you're pre-vet, you'll want to take um, the calculus uh, placement exam. Um, so it should be linked in your checklist if you're animal science. Um, but if not, I think Kaylee had put the direct link in the chat so you can access that. Um, you okay. will want to take the math um, placement assessment at least 24 hours before your appointment, um, because then the score will be available by the time that you meet with an advisor. Um, as an animal science student, you it, you likely won't end up taking calculus maybe until the spring semester or sophomore year anyways, um, because in the fall semester you'll be taking three lab courses for your major, um, so you likely won't even have to worry about calculus, but you can take the exam now, um, which will help place you into calculus um, when you decide to take it, basically. Okay, thank you.
And then I think that was all the hands up. We do still have the person who answered the first question. Their hand is still up. So if they have another, feel free to ask it. If not, that's totally OK, too. Um, yeah, um, I'm in the uh, agroecology and landscape design major. Um, I know you choose a concentration in one of the two. Uh, how does that exactly work? Yeah, great question. So um, there's a lot of majors that we have within CALS that have concentrations. So agroecology and landscape design is definitely one of them. Our, uh, our CDAE majors, food systems, um, those are nutrition. Those are some majors that have concentrations. I'm probably forgetting some. Um, so right now, what we typically recommend is that you declare a concentration as soon as you're ready, but probably no later than the end of your sophomore year. Um, so all of the majors with concentrations have like a core set of requirements. When your degree audit is available, which is um, a really awesome tool for tracking your requirements, you'll be able to see um, all of those kind of spell spelled out. But basically, there's core requirements that everyone in the major takes. And then once you declare a concentration, it's going to be like a, sec a second kind of like subset of requirements that you'll meet. Um, so for your specific major, whether that's you know, landscape design, um, you'll then work with your advisor to choose majors for that or choose classes for that concentration. The other thing that concentrations impact are advisor assignments. So once you get to your sophomore year, if you're a first year, um, if you declare a concentration, that's also going to help dictate who's advising you. Um, so each department has faculty that specialize in the different concentration areas um, and you'll be assigned to one of them. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. And I think that's all we had for hand raises, unless anyone else has any questions. Yeah, and if you don't have a question right now, you have our contact information, so you can definitely reach out to us over email um, if anything comes to mind after this presentation. Um, like Kaylee said, she's monitoring the email and, and she'll make sure that the right person gets back to you as soon as possible. Um, so I guess we'll end the presentation today and just again want to thank you for taking the time to meet with us. Um, if you haven't graduated high school yet, definitely good luck and congratulations. Um, we'll see you soon and we'll definitely see you in August. So thanks for joining us today.